The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Money Masters. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Tom O'Brien and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien, TFNN. It's the Money Masters. Uh, Tom is out on some business today. So we are fortunate enough to have our man Basil Chapman joining us in the co-host seat. Basil, good morning. Good morning to you. And uh, before you go any further, I just wanted to say I have finally had a chance to listen to Tom's webinar from the other night. Yes. And it was fabulous. He went into detail that most of us uh, we just it was enlightening. It, it gave a new perspective to uh, the way you can look at those 300 percenters and in these daily case, leverage nugget. vehicles. Yeah. Right. For sure. Fab well, I'm glad you had fabulous. a chance to check it out. And I know a lot of listeners probably either went live or they can watch the archive themselves. Hopefully they signed up. It's really worth it. Yes. So we have the Dow down triple digits, 116 points. NASDAQ down right. about 26. S&P down nine. I heard you talking about the VIX, of course, volatility. That's getting some spikes. And uh, that's a perfect segue. Why don't we jump right to our man, Kevin Hinks, TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, uh, Options Hour every market day, 12 o'clock noon, right here. They talk options, education, and if you're trading options, you better know about the VIX and the volatility. Kevin Hinks, what's going on? Good morning, guys. Good morning, Tommy and Bethel. How's everything going? Everything's going great, man. Good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm just kind of, you know, it's funny. Talk about irony this morning. I'm on the treadmill about 6 a.m. listening to the Under Armour earnings report. Oof. And I look down and I've got Under Armour socks on, Under Armour <laughs> shorts on, and an Under Armour t-shirt. And I'm thinking to myself, well, it's, I did my part. It's you did your me. perspective is everything sometimes, right, <laughs> exactly. Kevin? If, if only, if only uh, everybody else was, was mimicking your outfit in the mornings. But, yeah, exactly. talk about they had some rough numbers. They're off to a rough start. You got a decent rough start to the market. Uh, what, are you, what are you looking at out here today? You know, hopefully, if you were listening to the Swim Lesson shows and you're paying attention to what we're talking about, you know, the volatility is a mean reverting instrument. And here we go, right? We don't just go straight up. We don't just grind. We move back and forth. And now you're getting a little recovery. I don't know if it's because of corporate earnings because you've had a couple misses. You've got some good, healthy misses today in earnings department. Or is it the rumor that was around yesterday about tax reform coming next year as opposed to this year? Yeah. Right? Yeah. What's the real reason that the, the markets have gotten a little shaky? Because, you know, Sands a couple outliers. Earnings have been pretty healthy. Sure, definitely. Right? Not too many misses. A couple today, though. I see a couple soft numbers out of UPS and Under yeah. Armour. But uh, all in all, earnings have been okay. I think as I've been, as we've been watching them come out, you know, over a wholesale number. But why was the why is the market getting a little soft? And I think an underlying. You know, something shaking the market is this: Are we getting lower taxes this year or next year? Yeah, they're going to, you know, that's what I think there's a lot of rhetoric, of course, talking about it. But um, already there's there's a little bit of chaos and that's going to make things tough. You know, you know, you only have so much political capital. Right. And so quick. And we see that. And so uh, even if it's coming quick, then maybe maybe there's just worry and how easy or, you know, how how that process is going to go. Right. Right. And just the fact that he hasn't spoken about it. Sure leads to the speculation that maybe he's putting it on the back burner. Sure. I mean, what he needs to do maybe, if it's still on the on the forefront, is to come out and talk about it and mention something. Of course. Now, in some interviews that, that you've seen, and I watch a lot of news shows, they all say it's still in the pipeline and it's still being worked on and it's going through, you know, it's going through all these committees and people are talking about it, but nothing uh, substantial yet. Yeah, and we'll see. We, we Nobody really knows, right, in terms of, but it's right. all, uh, you know, we're, we're picking up hints. Uh, there's now, what, we're 10, 11 days out, though, and, and there hasn't been anything said. So, you know, right. people are going to try and read into what the future holds, as, as is right. the case. But, right, Tommy. But meanwhile, volatility has been historically low yes. the last few weeks for this time of year. So hopefully... Uh, if you were listening to Swim Lessons, you were ready for that yeah. with the right strategies for the right volatility level. So we, hopefully 
That's the case. Uh, my dad and I, we took a look yesterday, Kevin, at the um, at the VIX, and yeah. ten thirty, ten dollars thirty cents was the low on Friday, and yeah. we pulled it back. And there were only a few times, a few, you know, even once within the last four or five years. Um, that we were below that level. We were approaching, I think it was 10.18 or something, five, three years, four years back, and then not before a couple of years. So, I mean, you're talking about really, really historic lows, at least five, you know, seven years back. Right, and some of it's the environment, right? It was kind of a slow grinding rally that kind of got up there and then consolidated for a while, right? Not a lot happening, not making new highs, but not lows. Well, that, that's not going to last forever, one yes. way or another. You better right? know that. Some volatility yeah. is going to come into the market, and earnings season usually will provide that yeah. if they give it the opportunity. Let alone so, yeah. everything else going on in the world right now, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, what are we, so it was a good safe bet to bet on some volatility. What yeah. are we talking about on the show this afternoon at 12? So, t so today we're going to talk about something, you know, we talk about a lot, a lot of things like uh, positive decay in your account, right? positive theta coming in each day and well today we're going to kind of flip it around and talk about ratio spreads back spreads okay. and curvature in your account getting ready for the big move right if short spreads and short volatility lose money on big moves what makes money on big moves well curvature that's man. what makes money on big moves well the show is awesome man keep it up i listen all the time i learn stuff all the time so everyone check it out 12 o'clock today kevin hinks scott connor kevin we appreciate it man have a great show Great talking to you guys. Have a great day. Thanks, man. Okay, we're coming back, folks. We got the market down, and it's accelerating. Dow's down almost 140, and the S&P's approaching down 11 points, and the VIX is at 1241. We'll be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
We take your phone calls now. 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 Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. the Money Masters. It is Tuesday and the Dow's down 125, and Nasdaq's down 18, S&P's down about 9, and uh, crude oil up 60 cents, and gold. How about gold, Basil? Up uh, approaching $20, $18.70 right now. It's really fascinating. If you look at the price of gold, let me just pull up the chart right now. Please. If you're looking at gold, now there's a technique uh, within the Chapman Wave methodology that I, I always talk about, and that's looking for the most identifiable lowest low and merely counting each successively higher peak, and you expect four peaks to go to a D. But it can also go to an E and even an F, sometimes even a G. What, what that means is that, I'll show you right now. In the gold chart, back in October, there was a low right there uh, on the 7th of October at 1248.5. Okay. And it went to four successively peaks, and then it sort of stalled. But the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, the, the, the nine-period differential, that's that green line, it's the faster moving average, was still running very strongly, and so was the slow stochastic. That's, that's on the left side. This is the daily chart right here. And that's the uh, slow moving, uh, slow stochastic. And then what happened is it ran all the way to an E, and then it pulled back sharply. And then we got that uh, right there on the 9th of November. It was actually the 8th going to the 9th. Sure. We had that election day intra-evening. The market sold off 800 points. <laughs> the futures sure sold off. You remember that? Oh, I do. Gold, gold went spiraling higher. Yeah. The dollar went uh, up, and then by the end of the, what happened was uh, the dollar went down, sorry, and then by the opening when yeah. the election all, results were all there. All was well by the morning, right? All was well. It, and if you went to sleep and you didn't know anything about it, you say, oh, yeah, uh, quite oh, a, you what, know, yeah, you see a the, quiet evening. <laughs> you see the tape coming across, right? And you just yeah. see the change. You say, oh, wow, that's amazing. You know, nothing even happened. It's like, yeah, uh, nothing. Yeah, that's a ho-hum, it, it right. Is, it is, it is. <laughs> so that's a, that went to a late Leg, that's the sixth leg up in the Chapman wave, and that's leg F. And that's in this particular instance, it's what I call a rogue wave, because if you look at the technicals, they were already falling from that peak E. The stochastic had already turned down. Look, it already turned down from the little doji candle back on the 4th of November. So I call this a rogue wave because essentially what that means is when you go to the beach and there's a sign that says high tide at noon, and at noon, you're right there at the right at the edge of this rock, and you think the tide's going out. This is where I'm going I'm to camp out for the rest of the day. You put your sunscreen on, you've got your dark glasses, and you're about to put your book down, and splash! All of a sudden, there's this huge wave, and you wipe your glasses and say, what happened? You look around, the tide's going out. That's the rogue wave. It didn't see the sign at the beach that said 12 noon was high tide, because at 12.06, that one wave... Uh, arbitrarily went to to a higher uh, to uh, right up the beach. That was a rogue, the, rogue day and a rogue wave for sure. And that's exactly what happened. So what happens is that the trend really was down, but there was this one wave that didn't see the the the, the sign and it went higher, and then it went back to what it should have been doing, and that was going down. Now look what happened. We've gone from the low that was made at eleven twenty four point three. That was on December the fifteenth. You start this move, and look at this nine-period exponential moving average, this black line. Look how beautifully it's just gone with the, the price, and I call this walking the nine EMA. Okay. And that's what the, the gold has done. And there's a left side, right side price time match that in a cup formation that I use and all the different things. And then what happened is it went to a peak F, the six highest peaks, same story. MACD was doing beautifully. Stochastic was doing beautifully, and then the stochastic started to turn down. So what happened is that that pullback for the five, for four sessions that we had, going from the high that was made on the 24th of January down to the low of the 27th of January, the stochastic did pull back very sharply. But I always say price is the arbiter of a trend, meaning that it doesn't matter. You can look at all the technicals you want. You can use Fibonacci, you can use Chapman Wave, you can use volume, you can use on-balance volume. Doesn't matter. If the price holds, 
That's the most important thing. So look what happened. I call this. It's like it looks like a little like a dolphin, and if that. Uh, the green line, the, the fast moving average, flattens out and then turns up, doesn't cross negative, and the price moves higher, it's now deflected to the upside. And that says to me um, that gold is becoming essentially an arbiter of fear, like a currency of fear, sure. in the sense that it's, I don't think it has so much to do with the dollar or other currencies. I think it is the uncertainty of this particular period that is saying to a lot, and this is not you or I or any, this is countries that are starting, it looks to me that there's major buying in gold because gold should technically, with the dollar having gone so high, gold should have been way down and it's holding very well. The action we're looking at today, up $20, is saying to me that if Gold takes out the high that was made at 1222.1 on the 23rd and that high of 1222.80, that particular area right there. If we can close above it, then the 200 period moving average, which became the uh, support that was broken back on the 10th, this orange line right here, that will become a magnet. This is the 200 period exponential moving average. And this bluish line right here is a 200 period simple moving average. That's the one that most, to my knowledge, most uh, fund managers who don't do technical analysis, most people who don't do it just grab a, a moving average and it's usually this one and that's much higher up. So this is going to be very interesting because if you look at the dollar, if you don't mind me taking a little no, time. No, I, I already was looking at the dollar as I was going to push you right there because that's, you got to cover what that's doing if you're talking about yeah, gold for sure. Because, exactly yeah. right. You have no choice because they work in complementary ways. Another, this is a lot like a Bach fugue the one, where the melody goes one way and right. the other voices We could have started the other with the dollar almost, right? And then you tie it into Absolutely. gold. Right, go for so it. So now this is going to be very intriguing for me because over the last couple of years the dollar has been moving higher and in a sense it's coordinated to be moving higher at the same time as the stock market is moving higher okay all of a sudden and there's that 200 period moving average of 98.44 and what i've been talking about for a little while and mentioning to my subscribers to my opening call is that if the dollar starts to trade in the 99 area to me that is critical because 99.43 was the low of the 8th of december remember that whoopee day that we were yes. talking about and then it went even higher it went to 103.82 to a top at a peak e right there and now what's happening is that the dollar is showing that it isn't able to break above the nine period moving average. The MACD, the moving average convergence divergence has been extremely uh, weak. And the stochastic hasn't been able to get above the 20% area. It's at 17%. And that's suggesting to me that I have no choice. Even if we're looking at the QQQ series, which has been the strongest, the NDX 100 trading vehicle made two little doji candle tops right all time high at 125.92. Oh, wait a minute. I think it just missed it by a fraction. Let me, if you don't mind, I'm just going to check it to up. see. I like to be detail oriented. Let's see. Yeah, at 120.50. Oh, this is the QQQ. 120.50. 120.50 was the high of March of 2000, but actually it was the composite index that I really wanted to do. Okay. So we've got a break when we we'll get back. We'll take a peek. Perfect. That. Perfect. All right, folks, come on back. Tommy O'Brien, Basil Chapman. We will see where that is if we reach that peak. And uh, Dow's continue down triple digits, floating around down 120, and uh, S&P's down seven. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. 
If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien, Basil Chapman, Dow is down 130, NASDAQ's down 19. And go for it, Basil. So what were you looking at? The NASDAQ, what? So I was looking at the QQQ the series, Qs. which has okay. gone to an all-time high. Okay. The composite, the NASDAQ composite has gone to all-time high. So they're all in that boat. Now, what's really interesting is that on a monthly basis, the QQQ series is still only in leg C. So I'm looking out for the year of 2017. I've been talking about this for a while, saying that I anticipate higher prices, but on a short-term basis the daily charts are starting to say to me, hey, this is uh, something you've got to be aware of. Almost every one, if I use the alternate count in the Chapman Wave for the, for the, uh, the Dow, this seems to me to be um, a peak E right here. It's got E slash B, but the way it pulled back yesterday, today I see the subscribers began to... Uh, um, we, we look, we're not looking at the long side. We're starting to look more at the short side, adding to the short side. And in this particular instance, the way the action is with the left side uh, making, what was it, a month, just over a month of consolidation and then the single breakout to the upside back into this um, this gray zone right here says to me, at best we can make a, like a head and shoulders with a little rally uh, towards it, towards the 20,000, maybe 19,000, 90s area. And then maybe we've got to be careful. Maybe we should start to look at the pullback because the weekly chart is starting to show the same kind of weakness in the price. But the MACD and Stochastic have held very well. But if you look at the, in the middle chart right here, if you look at the red line, that's the relative strength, the RSI, and it's starting to break down. So I've got, this is where I would be most cautious because I've got almost everything in line to say that there is less chance of a breakout to the upside that can be sustained, more chance of making lower highs and lower lows at this particular time. That's the way the chart is looking. And the fact that the volatility index, you know, yesterday was the way the VIX moved, you would have thought that we were down five or 600 points, really, five or 600 yeah, points. Yeah, it was getting a little aggressive. I know, big move, right? 
big move. That meant that today should have seen that whole, almost all of the move negated, that we should be back in the 1160 area. No, we're 1264. We're going towards the high of the day. This says to me that there is, and this is the end of the month. This is where you start. Usually you'd see buying pressure because that's the way it works with the end of the month, beginning of the month, um, the phase of, of the money coming in sure. and being spent by the fund managers. So this says to me, be real careful because as I say, I'm going to make it real simple. Trading in the high 13s starts to suggest that the downside of the, the general market is becoming the support levels are going to be tested. Just making it as simple as that. No, and that's, you know, I've just been saying recently during the programs where, you know, no matter what you think is coming in our future, it seems like there should be a little bit more uncertainty and fear after the dramatic rise that we had, the, the potential unknowns. Um, any president coming in for a new administration uh, you know, it's almost like one of those things, you know, you, you buy the rumor, you sell the news, right? Everything correct. is that's euphoria for the, you know, we've gone up so substantially, 30, 40 percent in some of the major indices. Um, how can you possibly deliver on that immediately? Whereas there are the, you know, now that it's time for reality, everyone's kind of realizing maybe the expectations or maybe it's just a natural pullback. We've just come so far. But with the last two days, we're down triple digits back to back now in the Dow. Um, That's correct. And, and not only that, Tommy, we've got uh, we've got some statements made by an incoming president that have set a different kind of precedent because you normally would not get uh, economic uh, disclosures coming so quickly and really very important. These are not these are not arbitrary. These are these are ramifications that have repercussions that could turn out to be very positive but you just that initial phase could always scares you know when it comes to the stock market fund managers are very cautious yeah and, they, and you finally and, now have, have ceos actually saying that what's happening is not good for business not even in politics you know which which they had nothing to go on previously right as in right. it's correct not to even speak out on anything because until it's a reality it's not a reality and so it's interesting now to see that, you know, they're just speaking of some of maybe the, whether it's Blankenfield, you know, just across the financial That's sector right. saying and, and, this is not going to be good for the bottom line, regardless of what you're thinking. So we'll see what happens. Well, that, you know, this is a very interesting phase because we will only know in the fullness of time whether or not what is going to be implicate, Im, implemented when it is. It has to still evolve. Right. So, and not only that, we know that uh, the president is a person who is really, he is the, I used to think that Bill Clinton was the, the connoisseur, the art of compromise was Bill Clinton, because he always negotiated in, 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 a, in a, a different way. Sure. But actually, Trump's prime uh, focus is to be able to make as bold a statement as possible, see where it can get you, see what sticks, and then make a compromise. Right, he seems to have done that all the way up. Yeah. And that is negotiation. So we do, we have no idea what is actually going to stay there sure. as principle. What's, what's the ultimate goal, right? Correct. Right. So where do we want to end up? Because in any negotiation, yeah, you don't start with your your uh, your first offers, not where you want to end up, right? That's exactly. that's how it goes, for sure. Right. So that that means that this is a lot of noise, and there I think is. markets. Mark, you know, I always say, people say market hates uncertainty. I say, hey, every day the market deals with uncertainty. That's what it right. doesn't like is uncertainty about uncertainty. Sure. In other words, one deviation away, it starts to get real nervous. Sure. And sure. that's where we are. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking at this and I'm saying you know uh, you have a look at this I can go through all of these stocks and let me let me if you don't if you don't mind no go ahead and just as you say you know it's interesting because and I think that's what makes the the run up between the election and the inauguration so remarkable as well right because there is so much uncertainty and that things take so long so so they you do. know for everything to go up within the span of a month or two. Um, that's not how, even if there's dramatic tax policy in terms of if that translates into a growing economy, when it does, and all of that, yeah. Correct. Now, if you look at NVIDIA, I'm just running through yeah, our Nvidia. Go for it. top stock. Made its height 119.93 on, on December the 28th. Hasn't been able to get back there. It's at 108.75, a peak E in the weekly chart, a leg D in the monthly. Says to me that NVIDIA... A fantastic company. It's just a little overbought. If you go to number two, which is Ascent, 
group, uh, ESNT, I believe it is. And that's number two, making a, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> making a peak D as we speak. This is what I call a Chapman wave overlapping wave. It made a peak C right there on the 12th of December, pulls back, goes into a sideways consolidation, has an inside buy mode that goes ABC, and then a combined, I call it an overlapping wave because when you get these two peak Cs, when the next D starts, it overlaps the previous and it starts the D that usually comes back to test the breakout, which would be at 33.94, and it's at 34.39. And leg D in the week, he's still a fabulous job, but it looks to me like it's a little bit overbought. And especially when you, start, when you start seeing them lining up. Go ahead, keep, you know, that's... And I, yeah, yeah. And I, I know, I just keep going. HQY, HQY is Health Equity Inc. Platforms for Tax Advantage for Healthcare. This has made a peak D in the daily, a D in the weekly chart, leg C, so it's still bullish looking out, but short term. And this yeah. is the way I've gone through all these different charts. The market swings, right? And man, we had quite a swing on the way up. So no matter <laughs> what, we did, could be yeah. in the biggest bull ever about to come. And guess what? We could still drop hundreds of points, you know, from where Good. we are right yeah. now, for sure. Uh, Dow's down 112, NASDAQ's down about 18, and gold is up about 18. Basil Chapman, Tommy O'Brien, we'll be right back. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back. Tommy O'Brien, Basil Chapman, the Money Masters. It is Tuesday and the VIX is still climbing, Basil. I love that VIX chart. We're at uh, 1270 still and uh, we will see where we end up. That's, you know, I, I especially really started taking a look at that more as it approached those historic levels. And it's pretty funny because on Friday, 
Uh, I'm always watching whether it's our programs or sometimes I'll pull up Bloomberg if it's even before we're live in the morning. And they're literally talking about the VIX is approaching historic levels of lows, you know, and with that Friday and then we know what happens Monday and, and today. <laughs> That's right. 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 Well, you know what? I tell you what's very interesting in terms of looking at different uh, indexes. For a long time, for subscribers, I've said, look, we have certain levels, and I've, I've given it to them in print in, in my uh, webinar series that I did. I discussed it. And uh, just to make it real real simple, you know, you're going to the 13s, you start to see triple-digit uh, moves that are down, but you don't have to close triple-digit down. Once it goes to the 15s, then you've got to be careful. Going into the uh, high teens, all of a sudden, you start to see triple-digit closes to the downside. And then once you get into the 20s, you're starting to get closer to some kind of uh, um, culmination of the fear as a low is going to be made. You don't know where it's going to be or when it's going to be. But as it occurs, you get that incredible spike in the VIX index, and then it's all over. And that's uh, kind of, I think, in a way, that is... We haven't even gotten to the stage where it starts to get into the overbought level yet at 1266. You can see how many times. Look at this nine in the, in the weekly chart. If you look at the nine period moving average, you'll see that the VIX itself is barely closed above that nine period. It's gone above it. But during the week, it's so often on a Thursday afternoon or a Friday, it looks like, oh my goodness, like in October, the week of the 21st, it looked like, oh. It, the VIX was already at 17.11. Uh, it looked like it would go even higher than the week before, which is at 17.95. And then lo and behold, it just turns around. The market zooms to the upside, and it closed at 13.27. So the, although it looks like it keeps going higher and higher and higher, if you look at the nine-period moving average, if you had to count the number of days that the volatility index closed below and the number of days it closed above, you'll find that it closed above far seldom than it closed below. And this is going to be why this coming Friday is going to be so important because we've only closed going all the way to the 11, to the November, the week of the 11th turnaround week. We've only closed above the nine period moving average once. And that was the week of the last week of December. It's been, Isn't that interesting? It's you been quite think a one way ride. You know, in terms of you say it, I know what you mean, but it really has been for the market straight up, right? You know, I mean, literally a, a 45 degree, 90 degree, um, 45 degree angle straight up. Um, and that's what, you know, just basically when the market's just going straight up 20 percent, 10 percent. Yeah, that VIX was just slowly just dropping, dropping, dropping. That, so that, I can see that for sure. Right. So now it's become active and that's very good. And it's active because um, although when it's had two days, maybe three days in a row, then it's all over in this particular instance, because I have those peaks in the daily charts. It just says to me, unless we make new recovery highs to recycle to the upside in the Dow, the S&P, the QQQ series, I it this is a period right now to be. I'd be much more careful. You just yeah, got to you because, have no choice but to be cash. No, careful. and this this you know the the VIX of course is a complex formula that they're going through, but it's the premium that they're putting into the S and P options. And I mean, I, I like to always look at both sides of the trade just from a common sense perspective. If you yep. put yourself on the other side of those trades and you want to be you know the person that's just making the premium for the options, right? I mean, I would I would want a decent premium to give somebody the option on the S&P with the expectation that you could get some movement here. Um, yes. You know, and so it should make sense from a common sense perspective. So I just, uh, I took a look at the VIX um, real quick. Now I have this going back on a 10 year chart. And I believe that from 2014, which was what they were talking about, I believe, let's see where the low was 1034 in June in 2000. 1028, yeah. And, that's and, what, ten, and then is it July? Yes, July, it was 1028 was the low. And right. so we were literally within pennies of that. And then, you know, you really have to go back again all the way to 2007 before we actually get below those numbers. So within the last... So 2006 was 9.39, but wait okay. a minute until you hear this. You can go back to 2000, uh, 1993 okay. to $9.31. $9 so now <laughs> the, the other thing that you've got to consider now is that we are getting an excel we've had an acceleration in the number of times that the volatility index has gone into the tens or lower.
That's really important. Yeah. My my contention is <clears throat> that the volatility index is essentially going to be telling us that if in this particular, if you look at all these declines, this is in a sense, one of the shorter declines that has the potential to see the VIX move higher because it's it spiked so many times higher um, into, the, you've got that spike back in January of 2016, you got the spike in June of 2016, you had the one most recently in November. That's a but great you chart that you're looking at too, with things labeled in terms of, of course, they're all they're all <laughs> yeah, usually right. uh, there's an event around there's them, always or a crisis. there's there's a memorable you know memorable moment for anyone in the market associated with each each time that spikes for sure. Absolutely. Now, what really is important is that because we've attempted to rally and and it's failed, will this time see the VIX hold longer and higher? Because if, you, if you're looking at all of these declines, you never got this jagged spike to the upside. Once it fell, it just went plop. Right, right. And this is the first time that it started to get real choppy and failed. And this means you could be crying wolf, wolf, so that no one really believes right now that the VIX is actually going to hold in the high, to the high side. And in fact, yesterday looked more to me like some insurance buying, just to be careful. Sure, sure. And then today... Is actually, a, I think, a trade saying this is a trade on the volatility index. Okay. So there's there's a difference between the for me the emotional side, and it's always very hard to measure. I mean, how do you really measure it? I have to do it just internally. I have no statistics, just other than the history of the action itself. But today seems to me more like saying, hey, wait a minute, this could be a trade. Yeah, now I mean, we get treated as a trade rather than just insurance. And as you say that, Basil, the Dow just jumped from down 145 to down 157. Um, it's early in the day. The Nasdaq's down almost 30. Um, but you got the Dow down approaching 1% again, which, which on back-to-back -back days, people, um, they, they are looking for whether this will become a trend, I'm sure. And that, yeah, will, now, that will drive some fear into the market. Well, it's interesting for me. Is that I had um, uh, what I call the Chapman Wave trend gauge. It flashed yesterday, <clears throat> intraday, to say that there should be a 9 to 11 point e mini rally that would help the SP and, and the Dow Cash rally. Well, it might have been intraday because if you look, it might have been from yesterday from the low to uh, the, you know, that big rally that we saw it wasn't a yes. huge rally, yes. it was big enough. And that was a rally that went right there. And it went from the low of 2,263.25 to a high of 2,277. So you already had a 14-point E-mini move. So this is going to be a real test because we're about to test the lows of yesterday. I mean, it's just so fascinating how we're coming off such a dramatic move in the markets upwards since November. We've reached all-time all highs. And we have a new president that's all about change. And uh, some fear is finally coming in the market of what that what that holds for uncertainty, for sure. Absolutely. Okay, come on back, folks. Basil Chapman, Tommy O'Brien, Dow's down 150, and we'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. 
As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with the Global Market Pulse. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour. Following the Tom O'Brien Show, Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with host Tom and Tommy O'Brien, along with Daryl Martin on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Basil Chapman, Tommy O'Brien. Basil, the hour's flying. I can't believe it. We're already in our last segment. I know. Dow's down 150. Mm -hmm. um, I tell you what, they've been asking about in the den. Can we take a quick look at silver? Because gold is rocking. Absolutely. Silver's rocking yes. as well. Um, but silver's been a volatile little uh, metal recently, for sure. As we go to silver, I just wanted to mention that the transportation average made a peak here, double tops. So we got to watch that carefully. You know, they've gone together. Yep. The, airlines, the airlines got hit a little hard with what was going on over the weekend, for sure. So if you look at silver, if this is a brand new leg A, it's a G slash A. So what it has done, it's stronger than the Dow, than gold itself because it's gone above the 200 period moving average. Remember, we were looking, here's the gold. <clears throat> gold still has to, uh, where did it go? Uh, I have to move it out like that. There it is. See, gold, the 200 period sure. moving average is still way up there. Look at silver. So this is very interesting to me because <clears throat> we've been watching gold be the leader and silver being the follower. Then a little earlier in the year, last year, no, a little later in the year, <clears throat> silver did a real quick catch up and it started to move even quicker. Now, are we looking at silver playing catch up to, uh, the, to the gold? Now over, you know, this tag and now, sure. it's, now it's the leader. I, I'm looking at the technicals and I would say that based on what we're looking at, the weekly charts are going to be absolutely key. Silver is making leg B in the weekly chart. Look at all these peak A minus failures that it made all the way from the top that it had back in July of last year, 21.4. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> that makes this very important. Good. Why? Because the monthly chart yeah, look at has... That. The monthly chart has to break, really, the monthly chart has to get above its 200-period its moving average, which is at about 18, let's call it 18.10. Okay. And as soon as it does that, that's now a different ball game. It means that the monthly charts are showing higher highs and higher lows. That's really what you want to see, and that's what we've just seen in the weekly chart. This is an important move for both gold and silver. And if you look at the dollar, the reflex action is sure. that the dollar is breaking down from those yeah. levels and the MACD and stochastic are turning down. And we'll see. We're only 48 cents away from 18 on silver right now, and we're up, you know, almost 38 cents, 2% on the day. So that's an achievable number for sure. And because it's acting like this in a, in a what, I can, I can, can we call it a crisis mode right now? Because this is the first time we've had two triple dead digit down days in the Dow. Since the I'd election, say right? that is. Yeah, I'd since say, the well, election. Well, it was, it, was, it was the first single day yesterday, so it's definitely yes. on the right, yeah. We call it a pivotal moment. So yes. that's, it's a pivotal moment. No, for but sure. But it's very important that it's, it's, it's saying um, that in the general market, what's working now, and you have to say gold and silver. That's really the, it, just to keep it simple. Definitely. Well, Basil, I appreciate you helping me out. I know you do a fantastic newsletter every morning, the opening call. I encourage people to go out, check it out. 
You can go to TFNN.com right under newsletters. You hit trading newsletters and you'll find the opening call under there. And um, Basil, real quick, just what do you put out there each morning? I know a lot of the charts we've been talking about, you upload, believe me, I'm in there. You upload them all. People can log into the members page and they can get a free trial right here at 30 days, pay nothing. I encourage people to check it out, but give them a quick feel for what you're doing every morning. Well, what I look at is I, I go through the different charts. This is my the chart that I call the overview chart. In fact, I can just grab it right sure. here. Sure, we got one we, minute, so go for we it. We got it's a perfect. minute. So I actually no, I, I actually took them all off. Oh, I can't believe I took them all well, off. Well, that's perfect. They oh, need to go, go over no, there. Right. Oh, there we go. Okay, we'll give them a sneak peek. I was going to so tell them the to get overview, the trial. Okay. And I discussed that what we're looking for. No, that's this great. So the, people uh, can see. You got the charts. You have your commentary yeah. in there associated with it. I have my commentary it. on each one of these charts. I show show this chart. Barons Dow. Next stop, Dow thirty thousand. Yeah. I said to myself. Oops. I know. Larry <laughs> Pesavento was talking about that as well. Quite a quite a cover for yeah. sure. Well, Basil, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're up next, of course, Tiger Technician's Hour. Everybody can give him a, a call, call in, talk to him what we want. And Basil, I appreciate it. We'll be listening, man. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Tommy. Good job. My pleasure, man. All right, folks, have a great day. We got Basil Chapman, Swim Lessons at 12, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Uh, we got John Logan and a guest for this afternoon. And, of course, Andy Hecht. Thanks, folks. Have a great one. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.